All right, why don't we get started? Guys, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, ways that you can build uh, consensus for an enterprise uh, cloud strategy. Um, this is based on my own experiences, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, those in a minute. Um, you know, why are we talking about this? Uh, we're already at a cloud conference. Um, it seems to be, um, if you're here, at least you've uh, thought about uh, cloud in your enterprise. Um, but that may not be the case for everybody in your organization. Um, you know, cloud isn't the obvious solution uh, for everybody, and it may not be the only solution to uh, problems which you're facing. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ways that we can, one, determine if cloud's the right strategy for us, and two, um, ways to implement that in the enterprise. So cloud is uh, as much uh, about, uh, implement implementation of cloud is as much about a cultural change as a technological change. Um, today's talk is going to focus more on the cultural side of things and less on the technological side. All right, before we start, uh, let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, my name is Justin Moore, and I'm the Director of Cloud Operations for American Express uh, Enterprise Growth Group. Um, so Enterprise Growth uh, Technologies is responsible for the applications and infrastructure, uh, which support the company's expansion uh, beyond the traditional card and travel uh, markets. Um, so not the traditional side of American Express. Um, we do uh, new product development, uh, including the Serve card, the Target Red card, uh, the Bluebird uh, card with Walmart, um, also foreign exchange services and expansion to international markets. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, we're a pretty fast-paced environment. Uh, we move quickly. Uh, we're an agile development shop. Um, there's a really high rate of change. Um, and a lot of times, there's short timelines. Um, so for us, that means uh, we had to come up with a better way of doing things. And, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we've done that and what the cultural shift has been at, inside of uh, enterprise growth. So on the agenda, um, we're going to focus more on how, as I mentioned, the uh, how of, uh, of our uh, cloud strategy, less on the what. Uh, we do want to come back, and we've got a more complete story for you, um, and we've got things in production. Um, but we want to make sure that uh, you know, we're adding value. All right. So how do you implement a, a cloud strategy? Uh, the first thing is to start with a problem statement. You know, what problem are we trying to solve with cloud? Um, is this a, a problem that could be solved in other ways? Um, are we trying to uh, improve our developer experience? Are we trying to reduce our time to market? Are we trying to reduce our costs? These are all good use cases for cloud, um, but they're not the only, uh, cloud's not the only solution for those use cases. Um, so start first with uh, what's the problem we're trying to solve before we just jump in and say, uh, let's build a cloud. Is there an easy way to solve the problem? Can we just build a faster horse? You know, if you're trying to solve the problem of faster provisioning, is cloud the only way to get to where you want to be? Um, is there an incremental improvement or a set of incremental improvements that we can uh, implement uh, uh, to existing processes that will meet the need in a cost-effective way? There might be. So we don't have to necessarily go with a cloud approach. But you might decide that we have to fundamentally alter the way that we're thinking. So cloud can be a powerful tool, um, but it requires a, a lot of effort to implement. Um, if you're here, you probably know that, right? It's not uh, the case that you can stand something up in a matter of uh, hours or days and, and have a cloud up and running, and you've transformed your, your environment. There's a lot of work that has to go into it from a technological and cultural standpoint, um, from a process uh, perspective, um, and also just from the underlying technologies, uh, getting people up to speed with a, a different way of doing things. These new technologies have a, a broad impact uh, on the way things are done, uh, the way we provision infrastructure and services in the environment, um, and also in the way that we uh, deploy code and manage processes uh, for things like uh, audit and compliance. OK, so you've um, gone through the problem statement, and you've decided that uh, cloud is something that can really help solve a problem for you. What type of cloud are you going to build? Um, there are a uh, couple of options, right? You can go totally public. Uh, something like Amazon or Azure or Google. Um, you could go private. Uh, OpenStack is a great example of that. Um, you may go with a hybrid approach. right? You might have something uh, that spans both. Um, there are going to be some drivers for this, uh, you know, legal and regulatory. Um, if you're a big public company or in the finance uh, space as we are, um, you may decide that the, the public cloud isn't the right place for your applications. Um, on the other hand, you may decide that it's a great place for your ap applications. Cost and time. Um, you may not have uh, unlimited budget. Uh, I'm sure that you don't. I don't. Um, you don't have unlimited resourcing and, and staffing to uh, implement a cloud strategy. You may also not have the right expertise. Um, so you might not have a, a team in place that can implement a, an on-prem cloud. So that may push you towards a, a public cloud offering. All right. If we've decided where our cloud lives, uh, whether that be uh, on-prem or, or public, 
what are we looking to deploy? Um, and this goes back to your problem statement. You know, if we're just talking about how do I provision servers faster, we may be talking about infrastructure as a service. If we are more interested in the developer experience and um, abstracting away some of that uh, infrastructure provisioning, we might be talking about PaaS. Um, so we really have to think about uh, what the high-level vision of our ideal cloud looks like for the organization. It doesn't have to be complete at this point, right? So all we're trying to do is just get an idea of what we want to build, um, how it will solve our problem. Um, you don't have to have all the answers, uh, but it's a starting place. Uh, it's something that you can take uh, back to the team and, and, and talk through. It's also the uh, basis of future conversations, right? So it can't be uh, just a really vague idea, hey, I want uh, a PaaS cloud that's going to be on-prem. Um, we're going to go forward with that. You should put some thought into how some of those processes should work. So once you've got that idea, let's talk to our direct leadership, right? So that's your manager, your director, your VP. Um, talk to them a little bit about the problem that you're trying to solve, um, why you think cloud is uh, the appropriate solution. Um, you know, demonstrate that you've thought through some of those, uh, some of those questions, the regulatory compliance concerns and the cost. Um, like I said, uh, public or private, um, you really just have to put some thought into it. Uh, the reason you start with your leader, um, they're going to ask you some great questions. Uh, they'll uh, talk to you about some of the challenges you may run into. But more importantly, um, if you get on the same page with your leader, uh, they'll be able to give you support as you move through the process. So later conversations with executive leadership, um, having your leader on board and having his leader on board uh, is a, a big benefit. Okay. So if your boss is on board, um, we're ready to uh, implement or, or start investigating a cloud strategy, um, we've got to think more critically about, uh, about what we're actually building, uh, nuts and bolts. So pull together a cross-functional team. And this needs to be pretty broad across the enterprise, across the users in your, uh, in your environment, um, because their job is to define the MVP. So we want to come together and talk about what's the first uh, iteration of our cloud, uh, what's the minimal viable product that we're going to launch with. This group doesn't need to be a group of senior leaders, and in fact, it uh, makes sense that it's not a group of senior leaders. It would be better to have people that are uh, closer to the problem, um, practitioners, uh, people that deal with the struggles of implementing uh, infrastructure and deploying services on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they best understand some of the uh, real-world use cases. We want to keep the team small. Um, we want to get away from uh, or try to avoid analysis paralysis. Um, large teams, everybody gets a say. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of this. Uh, you've got 100 people involved. There's just too many cooks in the kitchen, and uh, we're just not able to get things done. So we want to keep it small. Um, we still want to have a diverse uh, uh, group of people, um, but keep the uh, group uh, as small as makes sense for you. you know, some of the questions we've got to talk through. How will the process work? Um, you know, what other information are we missing? Like I said, we have sort of a high-level understanding at this point of what we mean by cloud and what we're talking about deploying. Um, but we don't have all the answers yet. And the group's uh, main goal is to think sort of more broadly about the types of issues that we'll have to solve and, and that we're hoping to implement with the cloud. You're going to need to meet often at first. Um, you know, for us, we did a, an offsite, a several day offsite uh, with this group, and we just talked through um, you know, our past experiences, our current challenges, um, a lot of whiteboarding. And we came up with a, you know, an early draft of the cloud. Um, at first, you're going to be meeting very frequently, a couple times a week. Uh, there's lots of decisions to be made. Um, as you dig in more, you'll find more information. Um, this group is going to be the, the sort of steering committee for those uh, future decisions. But as we get further in the process, um, you'll be able to meet uh, less frequently, weekly or biweekly, monthly. Um, it just depends on uh, what cadence makes sense for you. OK, so our cross-functional team's met, and we've got an idea of what we want to build. Um, so the next step for us is to uh, put together a demo. And this demo doesn't have to be anything uh, robust, right? Uh, for us, it was uh, all in one install of Packstack. And the goal was really just to take this uh, out and uh, show it to our leadership um, and just say, hey, look, uh, here are the problems that we're trying to solve. Um, we put together a small POC, and here is sort of an idea of how we want to solve it. Um, a working demo is uh, really important at this phase. Uh, like I said, it's not something that you're going to push into production, but it is something that you can show. Um, seeing is believing, right? So as, uh, as your leadership sees that you've put some thought into this and sees how things can work, um, it's going to sort of form the basis of, uh, of future conversations. So you want to talk about the uh, problems that you want to solve, uh, how you're going to solve them. The demo shouldn't just be, uh, here's Horizon, here's how I launch an instance. You need to relate it back to real-world problems. You know, how long uh, uh, does it take to provision infrastructure today? 
Um, if that's one of the problems you're trying to solve, demonstrate how long it takes in, in the cloud. You want to propose high-level timelines with milestones. Uh, so your leadership is uh, going to be very interested in knowing how long is this going to take, um, how are we going to track our uh, progress, what's the cost going to be, um, how much resourcing am I going to need, uh, and how am I going to prioritize this against other initiatives. So most importantly, uh, solicit feedback. Uh, this is a really good uh, place for you to get some information from people that have a broader view of the organization and some of the challenges uh, that you may not be aware of, um, uh, timing-wise, project-wise, uh, funding-wise. So listen to their feedback. Um, you know, don't just say, I've got an idea in my head of cloud, and, and this is what we're going to build, and either you're on board or you're not. Um, this is an iterative process. So take that feedback into account um, and build it into your, uh, your next iteration. You want to make sure that you're uh, clear with what you're asking for. Uh, what do you need to move forward? Do I need uh, additional resources? Do I need people? Uh, do I need money? Um, I maybe I don't have enough servers to launch the cloud. Uh, is this something that uh, leadership can help with? Um, so get those uh, the asks ahead of time, right? So know what you're going to ask for. Um, it puts uh, sets the groundwork for uh, some of the resourcing you'll need later. And this group is going to be a, a team that you can use to help make the case to senior leadership. So it's about building broad base of consensus up front. Um, our approach isn't to start with uh, the CIO and have a mandate. Our approach is let's build a broad base of consensus and, and take the whole organization along with us. OK, so leadership is uh, bought in. They say, let's say, go ahead and, uh, and, and start down this path. Um, you really need to get, uh, get the support of the rest of the organization. So we want to take this on a road show. Um, and we're going to start small. Uh, we want to meet with groups individually, uh, current stakeholders, uh, people that provision infrastructure today, uh, application owners. Um, you want to talk to uh, the business where it makes sense. Um, and the goal is just to talk through some of the challenges that they have, explain your viewpoint, explain the problems you're trying to solve with cloud, and then explain how they fit into the process. So why are we building this? Uh, what are we building? How do you fit into the process? It's really important that people feel engaged uh, in the process, that you're not just coming and moving their cheese. Um, if people aren't engaged in the process, uh, they'll find a reason for it to be unsuccessful. Again, you want to solicit feedback here, too. Right? These are your SMEs. These are people that are already experts in your environment. Uh, maybe you know, they're network admins or storage admins. They know how things have been done and why. Um, they may be able to give you good feedback as to uh, you know, what, uh, what types of challenges you'll run into with the approach. One of the, uh, one of the big uh, uh, messages we tried to send is this wasn't about a reduction in force. Even though cloud uh, automates a lot of what uh, people have done traditionally, our view is that it takes, uh, takes some of those time and we can use those uh, resources more effectively in the future. We want to try and uh, focus on uh, problems that they have. Uh, you know, engineers, uh, at least my engineers, don't love tickets, right? They work from a ticket queue. Um, so we went to all the uh, engineering teams and said, look, wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to sit in a ticket queue all day uh, and just provision infrastructure from tickets? All right, uh, good communication. Uh, that's key to the whole process. So there should be a continuous feedback loop uh, between uh, you, your leadership, your stakeholders. Um, as you're building, uh, get feedback. Uh, you don't want to get to the end of your build process. You've got a cloud up and running, and it completely misses the mark. Um, you want to have something that's useful for uh, your end users and your stakeholders, and something that uh, makes sense for the organization. You want to keep in constant contact with the stakeholders and involve SMEs. So for a couple of reasons. Um, like I said earlier, these are people that are already experts in your environment. Um, I like to pick on the network networking team because it was a big challenge for us. <clears throat> how, do we get, uh, how do we do networking in the cloud? You know, if we're including the SMEs, they've got some stake in, uh, in the game. They can say, uh, this is why we've done things this way, and you know, maybe your approach uh, doesn't take that into account. If they're in the process early, uh, they'll be much more beneficial to your, uh, your uh, initiative. You want to incorporate that feedback into your design. As I mentioned, it can't be a, a, a build it once, and hopefully it was, uh, it was the right thing to build. All right. So uh, we've got a, a cloud that we've been building, and we've gotten something that we think resembles an MVP. We want to uh, start uh, lining up beta testers. So these are internal users uh, that will have a, a use case for the cloud. Maybe they're, they're your application owners. <clears throat> and you want to find people that um, are going to uh, be engaged. So a program that's mandated from the CIO tends to have a low level of engagement, right? 
big boss comes in and says, we're going to have cloud. Uh, you're going to be on cloud, uh, whether you like it or not. People don't really like being told what to do, right? If you can engage people early and say, listen, uh, this is uh, something that we think is going to help everybody. Uh, we need your help to, to get there. Um, you're going to involve people in that process. So by asking for volunteers uh, to join, uh, join the program, you're going to be finding people that are motivated to move the cloud, so people that are enthusiastic supporters. When you're picking at that pilot team, you want people that are going to be enthusiastic, uh, but they also have to have a good network internally and a good reputation. So these people are going to be your best salesmen. Um, if I go and I'm an infrastructure guy and I'm trying to sell to the app dev, I don't have as much credibility as somebody that's a technical director who delivers applications, right? So if I can get somebody from the application team to be enthusiastic about the cloud and, and be a big proponent of it, he's going to have more credibility with the rest of the team. So these pilot users are part of what we call a high-touch beta. And we mean, uh, uh, in high-touch, just give them the white glove treatment. Um, so we want to learn from uh, actual use cases. So we're going to test this out on real customers, right? Uh, our end users, uh, in this case, uh, application developers. Figure out what works for them. We want it to be high touch and give them the white glove treatment so that they feel like they can be enthusiastic supporters for us. If, um, if the cloud goes terribly for them, these people that uh, have great networks and are, have a lot of credibility all of a sudden have a reason uh, not to back your, uh, your cloud initiative. So we want to make sure that they have a really good experience. We want to define success criteria up front. What does it mean for us to be successful in our uh, POC? Um, when will we uh, be finished with the beta? Kick off a, a scheduling meeting initially uh, to uh, just talk through um, how the cloud works and do a hands-on training. So up front, uh, remember, we're still learning from them. We want to update our documentation. Um, but we also uh, want to make sure they're uh, really comfortable with the cloud. And we're going to have to meet early and often. Um, as I said, these are high-touch beta users. Uh, they're going to have a lot of questions. We may not have all the answers. Let's keep a continuous uh, line of communication open. Uh, this could be a couple times a week. Um, it could be even informally. So, hey, I've got a problem. Um, make sure the cloud team is available to uh, answer questions over email or chat or phone. And we want to build on existing documentation. So this documentation is what we're going to provide to future users. In the future, we don't want every user, every new onboarded tenant to be really high touch because that's expensive for us to manage. Uh, what we'd uh, instead like to have is a, a good base of documentation uh, that we can use uh, to onboard customers more quickly in the future, um, but something that's been tested and, and used by uh, other uh, teams in the environment. All right, so the uh, general rollout. We've had a successful uh, pilot. Um, our uh, pilot teams are engaged, they're enthusiastic. We've solved all of the problems that, they, uh, that they've uh, encountered. We've gotten good documentation, and we're ready to roll out to a broader audience. So we want to leverage some of those learnings uh, from, the, uh, from the pilot teams. And this might be new user stories to develop new, uh, uh, new features. Um, this might be updates to documentation. But we definitely want to make sure that we have learned something from the, from the beta um, and that we build that into the next iteration. And again, uh, with our onboarding process, we want to start with training for the new users. The worst thing that you can do is hand somebody a manual of 50 pages and say, here's how you do the cloud. Um, start out with a, an hour-long session and, and talk them through how the cloud works and show them uh, hands-on how it's going to work for them. And again, be available. Right? You want to be there to answer questions uh, for the team. Um, don't just uh, fire and forget. Uh, we are not a public uh, cloud provider. right? We have internal users. We work with these people every day. Be good business partners to them. Uh, make sure that they're uh, comfortable with the solution. Probably most importantly is track the adoption and display this uh, around the office. So I've found that uh, people are uh, very competitive. Um, and if you show that uh, one Scrum team is, uh, has fully adopted the cloud for their application, uh, and you put that out in front of people, um, other Scrum teams are going to say, hey, listen, I don't want to be the last guy in the cloud. I'm going to start uh, prioritizing some of my uh, user stories in my backlog to get onto the cloud. So by pushing this out in front of people, they can see where they are in the process. OK, so we've talked mostly today about, uh, about how we're doing things. What are some of the challenges that you might run into? And some of these we've run into. Um, funding. So it's very rare when you start a cloud initiative that you just happen to line up perfectly with the budget cycle. And um, your CIO and your finance people say, here's $5 million to build a cloud. Usually what happens is um, over a period of time, you come to a realization that you need the cloud. 
um, and it's probably off cycle. Um, it might not line up well with your hardware refresh cycle. So you've got a uh, sort of a, an issue that you're, you run into. How do I get funding for servers? How do I get funding for resources? How do I get funding to run this project? So by keeping in contact with your leadership, um, you have the opportunity to uh, get additional funding, potentially. Also by talking to the functional managers. You know, those functional managers that we're solving a problem for, they may have some hardware budget that they can help with. If this is, you can demonstrate something that's going to benefit them directly, um, they may be willing to help out. They may also be willing to help out with the resourcing, right? Maybe I can dedicate half of a, an FTE to help with the cloud uh, for a, on a weekly basis or something like that. Partial buy-in. Uh, this is something that was interesting to me and it's something that we ran into. Um, very early on, we got pretty broad acceptance of the cloud. Um, everybody in, in theory said cloud is great uh, and we really want to have cloud. It's going to solve a lot of our problems. When we went to some of the functional teams, um, and again, I'll pick on networking, we went to the functional teams and said, OK, here's what the cloud means for you. I'm going to implement SDN. All of a sudden, it uh, it's becomes more real for, the, for those teams, right? And they say, OK, well, listen, uh, I appreciate what you're trying to do. Uh, I've got a good handle on my component. Um, I think there are other areas that you'd be better uh, uh, spent by focusing on, which was interesting to me, because uh, you know, the cloud only works if we've got all the components together. Um, so you've got to talk through what are the challenges they're facing and how we're going to solve their challenges in the broader picture and how all of those components tie together. It won't work if, uh, if only certain pe uh, components are on the cloud or certain uh, teams have joined the cloud. We've got to take a holistic approach. Prioritization. Um, I'm sure you're all aware of this. You have business uh, initiatives you've got to deliver on. Uh, the business is most interested in getting functionality out to the customer, as they should be. Um, so the teams are already busy. Do they even have time to help you? You, know, you may not even have a staff. It might not be the case that you got 10 FTEs to work on the cloud. So if I'm asking a functional manager for help with, uh, with the cloud, does he even have the resources uh, to, to help me? He might not. Um, so this is, uh, again, going back to talking to your leadership, keeping them up to speed, uh, getting their buy-in early. They can help with prioritization. All right, as I mentioned when we started, um, I wanted to reserve some time uh, here at the end uh, for Q&A. Uh, most of this is just around the how. It wasn't a, a technical discussion. Um, but uh, hopefully you all have, uh, have some questions for your own organization or, or questions about uh, what we've done at American Express. So if you've got questions, uh, please, they ask me to uh, ask you to use the microphone. Or if you don't want to use the microphone, I'll repeat them. It would be better if you could use the microphone. <laughs> How many people were on your project team initially? Initially, it was just myself. Um, so we had to make a, we had to make a case uh, internally uh, for how we would uh, build this out. Um, we were able to pull from other groups. Uh, we got four uh, FTEs to work on the project. Um, I was fortunate enough to sort of cherry pick these from the rest of the organization, so we got some really high end talent. Um, but uh, we didn't start out with a, a budget to you know hire a whole team of engineers. Were the four FTEs cross functional people? Yeah, they're more DevOps, uh, so we didn't just pick um, you know, a Linux guy and a, a network guy. We tried to pick people that were, uh, you know, had a, a background in a, a number of different technologies. And were the four FTEs the number of people that you had when you had the MVP? Yeah, we still only have four. Wow. Yeah. Now, we're not fully in production, right? So we're, uh, as I mentioned, our story is still evolving, um, but uh, we expect we'll be able to keep the team small. Uh, it's one of the benefits of, uh, of cloud for us is the number of people that we needed to manage the infrastructure in the past. Um, those resources can work on other projects, uh, and our cloud team will be fairly small for the foreseeable future. And last microphone hogging question, the period of time? Uh, the period of time end to end has been about 12 months. That's been a pretty quick, uh, quick turnaround so far. Thank you. <laughs> so my question's around uh, infrastructure and uh, or, or maybe better said, environment and reuse, and, and where do you, how much do you greenfield and how much do you try to integrate with the way you do your current network connectivity, uh, your current security model, your current uh, system administration? You know, like, do, you, do you try to kind of fit that or do you say, you know what, we're just going to go over here and invent it, we'll, we'll have one plug in, and if you want to use it, you go over there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it sounded maybe like there were two questions. How much of the existing infrastructure do we use and then do we standardize? 
Or, well, maybe to, to kind of wrap those together is um, what trade-offs, you know, like are, do you uh, do you try to fit it in? Do you try to find a way to shoehorn it? Or do you say it's better to, to go greenfield? Yeah, that's a really great question and something we've struggled with constantly. Uh, initially, we said, let's um, just layer cloud on top of what we have and it'll magically make things better. Um, that was a really, really bad approach. Um, so what we did instead, uh, in, at every step of the way, right? At first, we said uh, cloud on our existing virtualization platform, uh, cloud on our existing storage platform and servers. Um, at every step of the way, we found it just was not workable. Um, so we've just taken the approach of uh, it's a totally new environment. Um, we're building it off in parallel, uh, and we'll be migrating applications over uh, as we can. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks. So uh, when you said you're migrating applications over, uh, are you asking your application teams to actually re-architect their applications to be cloud-aware? Um, mm -hmm. So the, the investment, that uh, are they willing to take their investment and do the re-architect their applications, or just as it is migrations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, there's not a whole lot of uh, re-architecting that we have to do. Uh, we're an N-tier web application primarily already. Uh, we already put our instances behind load balancers. So we already expect that nodes will fail. Um, for us, uh, the re-architecting was really around tooling. Um, so we use a desired state configuration, which had some re uh, requirements inside of uh, the .NET version that we're using. Um, so it, it really wasn't a huge, uh, or hasn't been so far, a huge lift in, in terms of re-architecting the application, but maybe um, just validating that uh, newer technologies still work with the existing uh, code base. So uh, if you are doing ASIS migrations, uh, what kind of tools get used to convert from the existing platform to the OpenStack platform? Because the hypervisors are different, data formats are different. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we don't actually uh, do a uh, conversion. Uh, we don't take the existing VMs and migrate. Um, we won't talk too much about it today. Uh, we do want to talk more in the future about how we've built our PaaS layer, so we've built our own. Um, and, but uh, maybe just from a high level, we don't, uh, we're not going to do a conversion. We're going to take those applications and deploy them new to a cloud infrastructure. Okay. So I'm trying to think, like, what is the compelling driver for the application team to come here to this platform mm -hmm. if they are not going to get any capabilities from the platform perspective? Oh. for their applications? Yeah, so for us, what we sold to them is platform as a service. So we built uh, our own PaaS, and now they have complete uh, control of the infrastructure. So when they deploy their code, uh, they have push button integration with CI CD. Uh, they also have push button integration for push to production. So they don't have a big orchestration between uh, IT operations, project management, and end delivery, and software delivery. They own their application, and they have the ability to do everything they need to do to support the application. Thank you. Did you have to write a business case for this? We did, although um, it was a little less formal. Um, so what we uh, did was we did a cost-benefit analysis. So we said, here's the amount of time that we're spending today supporting the infrastructure. And we've got uh, pretty good metrics around that. Uh, we track through tickets how long people spend on uh, particular items. And we said, if we didn't have to support this, here's how much we would save. And even beyond that, there are some soft costs that we can, uh, we can gain by decoupling uh, Big Bang releases and going to more of a componentized model um, that make the business a little bit more agile. Did you consider developer productivity in that? It was number one. Okay. Yeah. Although we called it uh, developer enablement. Uh, I thought the keynote was very interesting. Uh, I, I also don't believe my developers are unproductive, um, but uh, we want to enable them to do their, uh, their jobs better. Okay. Um, and do you have any uh, metrics that you've been tracking in terms of cloud adoption? We will. Um, so as I mentioned, our story is not complete yet, uh, but we, are, uh, we have a dashboard that we've put together that tracks, uh, basically we have scrum teams, um, how many uh, scrum teams have adopted and what phase of adoption they are. And, and have you uh, done a survey of any of the cloud users to kind of get informal feedback from them? Um, yeah, and it's actually more formalized, right? So we meet uh, uh, frequently with our pilot users, um, and they're giving us really great feedback about uh, not just documentation, but things they would like to see uh, built into the platform and workflows they'd like to see. Good. That's a really good talk. Um, are you going to say no to puppies? I was curious what your puppy strategy is. Yeah. And did you involve, uh, two, two questions, I guess. And did you involve um, the early, to get stakeholders and buy-in? Uh, the security side of the yeah. house. Yeah, as you can imagine, American Express, we're very security conscious. Uh, they've been involved at every step of the way in validating the way that we're uh, laying things out. Uh, compliance as well. Uh, we want to make sure that we're both secure and compliant. Your other question around uh, pets versus cattle. Uh, we are bought in very heavily to the cattle idea. 
Um, there are going to be some, uh, some pieces of infrastructure which are pets. We hope that that's as close to zero as possible. Um, we're sort of in a unique position because we focus on product that we've developed in our environment. So um, a fewer off-the-shelf applications which we may not have control over. You mentioned that you had problems trying to adapt existing technologies like storage into the OpenStack. Was the issue that you were trying to be co-resident with existing workloads? Or was it just the technology, like an array, was the wrong fit for your thing, but you had total control of the array? Uh, it's actually both, uh, right? And really good points on both. Uh, one is sharing is difficult. OpenStack likes to own everything that you uh, give it control of. Uh, but two, um, when we started out, we said, look, um, it's not enough to just uh, automate existing processes. We don't want to just automate um, you know, a process that takes two weeks. Um, we want to rethink the process and say, what's the right way of doing things in this environment? And that was more of uh, the driver for it. Uh, you know, it would be one thing to automate every little step that a storage admin does. But if an if a app owner really only cares about data persistence, there may be a better way to, to solve it. Uh, so you've gone down the field, uh, you've gone down the direction of um, having a greenfield deployment as opposed to trying to mold it around what you're currently doing. Um, do you have a, 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 a set out plan on how you're going to deprecate the legacy environment to avoid having basically supporting two long term environments? Yeah, uh, great question. So I'm actually responsible for both environments. Uh, so it's uh, very uh, near and dear to my heart that we do have a, a migration strategy. Um, so first and foremost, we're working with the Scrum teams to get uh, adoption onto the cloud. Um, as we get all of, uh, all of the Scrum teams migrated over, we're going to look at those uh, applications which um, maybe are commercial off the shelf that we may not have uh, the ability to modify. Hopefully, we can migrate those as well. And are you looking at using uh, internal chargeback cost as a motivator, or, or, or I mean, what's your motivator? Are you just getting technology buy-in, or are you using a whip as well? That's right. Yeah, carrot and a stick. So the carrot is you get all these benefits of the PaaS layer that we're going to give you. Uh, the stick, it's sort of a soft stick. We're going to show back. So we're going to say, here's how much your infrastructure costs. Um, we've done a lot of work around a cost model internally, so we try to build um, every everything we can into it. Now, even the cost of cables and patch panels and things like that goes into the cost of a virtual machine. And if I can just be, I had one more question. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the uh, issues you may have had integrating with the existing um, enterprise legacy heavyweight uh, authorization authentication problems? Because um, I imagine you're not totally greenfielding that. Uh, and I, imagine, I would think that Amex would have quite mature um, role control already. Yeah, to a degree we are, though. Um, part of this as well was developing a set of tooling which allows us to manage our infrastructure um, in a more lights out capacity. Um, in our environment, it's sort of a bad word to say you're going to SSH or RDP into a box and do something to it. Um, we want you to use the enterprise tooling. Um, that's uh, our back, and that's integrated with existing AD. Um, but we didn't necessarily have to integrate um, the underlying VMs with things like AD um, in all cases. Uh, in some cases, they are. But in some cases, we're going to say, look, you just don't have the ability to log in. Thank you. So did you go through a vendor selection process for new hardware, or do you use, work with existing vendors? And uh, what did you use for your OpenStack deployment? Which yeah, um, we did go through a, a vendor selection. Um, we've got a couple of uh, uh, large name vendors. We also went with some uh, smaller name vendors. Um, the idea was we wanted to drive down costs uh, because we're bought into the cattle model. Uh, we really view infrastructure as a commodity. Uh, so if we're talking about a commodity, then I'm really talking about my vendors competing with me solely on cost. Um, they, it took some, uh, some convincing uh, on our part to get them to understand that uh, we don't care if a box fails, and that's OK. Um, you know, they wanted high-end RAID cards and, and things like that. Um, not position to share exactly which vendors uh, we leverage. Um, in a future talk, we will talk through some of those things, I imagine. Um, but we, uh, we did focus mostly on cost, and we knew that we were giving up um, reliability uh, at an individual component level to some degree. Um, we solved that in other ways, though. So you mentioned your network team a couple times. How do they feel about these new products coming yeah. in? You know what's funny? Um, I pick on them because uh, traditionally they, they're sort of the stodgy old guys, right, that, that you know, maybe push back a lot. They've been really ardent supporters of what we're trying to do and have really bought into a lot of the things. And they've come to me with, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? Um, so they're adding things to our backlog as well.
Is there one more question? Okay. Yeah, so you said that you don't care if things fail, so that requires a new way of architecting applications. How ready was your development team to undertake that new age uh, cloud native design and how are they doing on that? Yeah, so one of the benefits uh, we have, um, the division um, I'm a part of, uh, we're about six or seven years old. Um, so we don't have all of the legacy applications that uh, haven't been thought through you know, Web 2.0. Today, uh, our existing applications already uh, 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 route around failure uh, by having a load balancer out front. So individual nodes can fail, um, and we don't have a major outage. So there wasn't a huge lift for us. I don't have, like I mentioned, we don't have a huge uh, legacy backlog of applications that are 10 years old that we had to support. So things like concepts like stateless applications and things like that are, are yeah. baked uh, in already? They are uh, stateless as, as much as possible. Um, where we need to have shared session state, it should be in something that's uh, uh, clustered, um, Redis, things like that. Okay, and just triggered a, a totally unrelated question. How about disaster recovery? Is this production or is this pre-production development stuff? Uh, right now, we're in a pilot. Uh, it will be production, so we do plan on running our production workload off of this. Um, we view disaster recovery a little bit differently. Um, we follow uh, sort of the availability zone and region model that Amazon has. Um, so we don't uh, recover VMs in DR. We run those VMs all the time in a second region. So then it's a matter of routing traffic. All right, any other questions? Well, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Hopefully this was uh, use, a good use of your time.